What is going on, esteemed witnesses of the courtroom? Now, you probably didn't expect this, but today we've got some card games on some motorcycles. Got some good replays for you. So the first matchup here is versus Lightsworn Ruler. Uh, he's going to open a Lila and mill a couple. I'm going to Dragon Shrine for a Dragon Ruler and make some heretic plays. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to go to Tempest, go to Darkness Metal, Darkness Metal's Effect. And I restack the board with a Gaia Darkness Metal Blaster and a Tefunet. Uh, for you guys that don't know too much about Heretics, that is known as an OTK. So that's a first good game. Now the next uh, replay I have for you guys today is versus a... Let's see, what is this? Okay, in this replay I'm playing Pure Heretics. I actually played two, three different deck builds in this series, in this episode. So, I open a card card and try to go off, and he decides to break through skill me, so I can't get a card card off. I try to lance him, and he Satellar Novas me, so he negates that and gets to draw a card, and I'm sitting here with an 800 bricked that I can't tribute and draw cards. Exactly. Exactly how I feel, Anna. Exactly. So... I have, like, nothing to stack up here. Uh, the best thing in my hand is the Battle Fader to negate whatever and maybe tribute into something to maybe make a heretic play later. Uh, I want to give some shoutouts to Battle Power 777 and a couple other people that I've been talking to about Yu-Gi-Oh! lately because it's something that's kind of unseen on this channel, but it's something I really do enjoy a lot. And uh, BA can go die in a fire, but um, I'll get into that in a minute. So... He plays his trap, he gets to special summon the thingy again, deal another thousand, and I'm bricked still as I draw into absolutely nothing. He tops a twister, uh, he attacks me directly, I'm able to battle fader, so that works out pretty well. I'm kind of hoping he doesn't have a back row, um, a chainable back row. I can come in with Sue, MST the board, make a Tum, make Darkness Metal, make Watt, make Gaia, but that's still not enough to get the OTK. One of the most depressing factors is that Darkness Metal comes out at zero, so I may get Skill Drain. So, after making the first good play on the board, he tops, he top decks Raigeki, like, are you serious? And then tops Deneb uh, to search for the Altair, and he's going to be way out of his bad situation. And I top Max C. Why top Max C doesn't even matter, because if he, okay, he normal summons Altair, I'm going to chain Maxi off of that. So I'm going to go ahead and get my draw. I top into Lance, which is absolutely garbage. <laughs> like, it's stupid. And then he just finishes me off with um, Cowboy as I draw into a useless card, card D. So this next match is a hell of a lot better. Um, uh, you should bring your vanities to work every day. So the very first turn this guy goes dark gruffer and into the void and i'm like okay this is this is in for titties okay that's what this is and this deck died to soul charge so he makes the dragon that has as long as you have no cards in your hand, he can negate anything he lets me stack cards of consonants another draw card a convocation and lets me kill off his card to an effect before he does anything i decide to make hope and nebthet and finally, he turns over Vanity's Emptiness, which I just get rid of by destroying his monster and sending it to the graveyard. I feel like the Vanities was really late. And as you can see, it cost him. Now here, he could technically go into Beals. And why he doesn't is beyond me, because Beals would have been amazing right there. Uh, the only out I would have had would be that double seven play into Big Eye to steal Beals. So why he didn't go to Beals right there makes no sense to me. And why he didn't activate Vanities also choke. So... Unfortunately, the Burning Abyss replay uh, is corrupted, so I can't show you guys that. But I'm going to show you guys something really cool. Now, I was on Skype with Ben uh, during this match, and I was like, oh my god, these fucking ranked Exodia players. And you're going to see why I thought it was ranked Exodia. So I opened Shrine, I opened a Dragon Ruler in that thing, and I start making more heretic plays. Uh, a Tom, Darkness Metal, Darkness Metal into Blaster, into Gaia, and I hit him, and he doesn't stop me. Because my first thought was, okay, he's going to stop my attack with something, especially if he's an Exodia player. He's got like a Swift Scarecrow. So he, he goes to back row. I start going Darkness Metal. He goes Hope for Escape. He doubles on that. He draws cards equal to the difference in a thousand like wood. So he gets to draw eight cards. I make Stardust Spark and protect Darkness Metal for lulls, and he just drops Swift Scarecrow, and I set Decree. So he must tease my decree, and I forget Stardust Spark can only protect face-up cards, so 
I kind of brick right there and lose that. He goes Miracle Contact into Neo Spatian Hummingbird. Plays Neo Space, gets over 10,000, and almost Oko's me. And I'm able to finish it this next game. That's, that's just the most ridiculously cool thing I've seen in a while. Now, this is the Valkyrus Heretic build. This build is two formats away uh, using the Necloth Valkyrus. It allows you to tribute any two cards from your hand and to draw a card for each of those cards. I don't even need to say why that's good for Heretics. Um, also, it lets me play certain normals with advanced ritual art. Now, I open Manju. I love Manju because Manju kind of fixes broke hands. He tries to space time me, and I just wiretap him in the face. So here, I'm going to tribute two monsters, draw two cards, and make a plus two on the board, which is just fantastic. Go into M7 and get my Sue back so that I can use it next turn. He tries to malevolent catastrophe to stack hysteric sign, and I just trap stun him in the balls. And that's just fantastic. Um... It's another reason why people like uh, Heratic Sephira. I'm not a fan of that build because I don't feel like it gets enough with the light effects of Sephira. I don't feel like you get it enough. So I decided to try this build. And I love this build, but it's just a while from, you know, being out. So I make a Galaxy Serpent with that. And another cool thing about this deck, it's so easy to get Leo out. And it, Leo just shits on the format, uh, if you guys don't know. So he plays his thing that every time he returns a wind, he gets to normal summon again. He makes a big eye and steals my Valkyris and makes a Ragna Zero and just shits on my life right now. My only chance is to play... Uh, one thing I was going to say, how is this card legal? So I'm going to go double six and I'm going to go into Beyond the Hope. And Beyond the Hope makes all monsters zero zero on my opponent's side. Would you guys like to gander at how cheap that card is? It's 97 cents, and Heratics make this card almost instantly. It's just so easy to make. Exactly, Anna. Exactly. So, I realize that I'm not the most perfect uh, meta-minded when it comes to Yu-Gi-Oh! compared to Pokemon, but it is something I really, really enjoy. Uh, replays are kind of hard to commentate only because they go so fast. I don't want to slow them down because they'll look very, very blocky. Um... Like I said, I hope you guys have enjoyed uh, this this series. Let me know which uh, Heratic deck you like the best in the comments section down below. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. Rate, comment, subscribe. Peace out. Objection! Find the computer room and...